God is good. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Let's pray. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your moving this evening, Lord. We ask you to continue to touch our lives, Father God. We know you're not done yet, Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, take control. Anoint every word out of my mouth, Jesus. Remove flesh, Lord. Soften our hearts to receive your word, Lord. Let the word of God fall on good soil this evening, Lord. And let us prosper in our lives, Father God. I give you all glory and all honor. In Jesus' name. Someone say amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go to Luke 16. Something about Luke. When I was praying for God to give me a message, He told me to speak on a subject that a lot of preachers don't want to preach on. But I like to listen to the voice of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Luke 16, verse 19. The word Lord reads. Now there was a rich man. Here's another rich man. And he had habitually dressed in purple and fine linen. Joyfully living in the splendor every day. And a poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate. Covered with sores. And longing to be fed with the crumbs which were falling from the rich man's table. Besides, even the dogs were coming and licking his sword. Now the poor man died. Say died. died. And he was carried away by angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died. Say died. died. And was buried in Hades. Say Hades. Hades. He lifted his eyes being in torment and he saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom and he cried out and said Father Abraham have mercy on me and send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue for I am in agony in this flame. Oh, Jesus, every way. Holy Spirit, give me the right words that we need to hear. In Jesus' name, have a seat. My message is entitled, Hell is a Wonderful Place. Hell is a wonderful place. Understand that there is life after death. There is life after death. And in this story, we read about two men that died. A rich man and a man named Lazarus. The Bible says that Lazarus was carried into Abraham's bosom. To a place of paradise. Amen. Before Jesus died on the cross. It's a different message. And the rich man also died. And the Bible says that he lifted his eyes up. Being in torment. Say torment. torment. And he saw, he saw Father Abraham far away. Abraham. And he cried out, Father Abraham have mercy on me. And send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and to cool off his tongue. Which tells you that there's flames. I did some research. There's 55.3 million people that die each year worldwide. 55.3 million people die every year worldwide. One 
1,500 and 600 people die each day in this world. 6,316 people die every hour. Worldwide. This is worldwide. 7,452 people die every day in the United States. In other words, a person dies in the U.S. every 12 seconds. Count to 12. And every 12 seconds, someone is dying. The thing that bothers me is how many of those people died without knowing Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Yes, yes. And they woke up in a place like this where this rich man laid up his eyes, being in torment. I want you to think about that. If we Christians, I include myself, we're doing our part of what God called us to do. Yeah. Preach the gospel. Jesus told us that was go into all the world and preach the gospel. Souls will have a chance made to heaven. The Bible says in James 4.14 Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Your life is short. My life is short. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will also, we will live and do this or do that. But as it is, your boast is in your ignorance. For us, such boasting is evil. Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it to him, it is sin. Our life is just a vapor. And it's sin in our lives that keeps us from coming to Jesus. It's sin in our hearts that blinds us from the reality of this place called Hades or hell or the lake of fire. A couple of weeks ago I shared about the devil's a big, he's a deceiver. One reason of why people have a blindness towards this place called hell is because the devil have placed one of his biggest lies that there is no hell. And there's preachers behind the pulpit preaching there's no hell. Jesus preached about hell. There is a hell. Tell your neighbor, there is a hell. There is a hell. And millions of millions of people are there. Generation after generation, there's people there. And the devil has convinced people that there is no hell. There's one generation in the Bible of, of the generation of Noah. For 120 years, God waited patiently for the people to repent. As Noah was, was building the ark. They had a chance, a chance for salvation, but they rejected it. They mocked Noah for 120 years. His church was only a church of eight people. Think about that. His whole church was only really seven people for 120 years. He preached God's judgment. The flood's coming. And people mocked him. To the day he entered the ark. And we know 
that every one of those people died from that flood. Yeah, they did. And to this day, they are in hell being in torment. Yes, yes, yes. What is hell really like? Mm. This is the reality of hell. When people die without Jesus, they will go to this place called hell. They will. Not they might. No. If they die without Jesus Christ in their hearts, they will end up on a place called Hades or the lake of fire. The Bible says, not me, in Revelations 20, 15, that if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown. You know what thrown means? He was thrown into the lake of fire. Because you don't want to go. They're dragging. You have to throw them out. Like how some of y'all were thrown out of the bar. <laughs> You're thrown out. I'm going to give you a few scriptures that define hell. Mm-hmm. Matthew 13, 49 to 50. The word God reads that describes hell as a furnace of fire. A furnace. A furnace. Fire. It's a furnace of fire. And people are thrown in there. Your loved ones that you love that you haven't told them about Jesus, they'll, if they die, they'll go to this place of a furnace of fire. But it's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place. You don't believe in that. In Matthew 8, 10 to 12, Jesus describes that hell is outer darkness. It's, it's a place of outer darkness. I want you to think about this. When you see a fire, you can see the flame. In the little room, this room was pitch dark as it was when we light a little candle. It would brighten up the whole room. But in this place, there's a unique because this fire is dark. It's in outer darkness. You can't see in front of you. And in this place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Crying. People crying out. And some of your loved ones will be there. Because you have not told them about Jesus. But hell's a wonderful place. For your family to be there. In our darkness. A furnace of fire. Or there will be weeping. Gnashing of teeth. Matthew 25, 45 through 46 says that hell is eternal punishment. Say eternal. eternal. The word eternal, or I can't really comprehend it, but that word means everlasting. It's not going to stop. We have a headache, it's going to stop one day. We have a toothache right here, we have a toothache. You know, it hurts. It, it, it will stop after medication and taking care of it. It will stop. But in this place called hell, there's eternal punishment that's going to last forever. Do you know that when, when we die and we go to heaven, when Jesus comes for his bride, the Bible teaches that we're going to get a new body. It's going to be a glorified body. Yeah. It's going to be a body of immor- immortality. You're not going to taste death after we go to heaven. And you will receive a brand new body. The Bible also teaches that when you go to this place called hell, you receive a new body as well. And the Bible describes it as a body fit for destruction. Which means that your body will be able to handle every pain every torture, everything that comes your way, your body will be able to resist 
and hold on and feel everything that comes your way. It's going to be an eternal punishment that will not stop. And yet you're going to have loved ones in this place being tortured, being in punishment. But hell is a wonderful place for our loved ones to be in there. Revelations 2015, we read it. Jesus says that whoever's name was not found in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. It's a place, it's a lake of fire. I know we've all been swimming, jumped up in the lake, right? Imagine a lake of fire. And there you are, burning. There's your loved one, your cousin, your sister, your brother, your mom or your dad. There, in that lake of fire, burning. Crying out. In Luke 16, we read in, in, the, in this place where this rich man, where the Bible says it's a place of torment. It's a place of torment. You know what torment means? Being tormented. It's in the mind. Your mind going crazy. Your mind being uh, uh, molested and, and played with. You cannot run from it. You cannot hide from it. It's going to be a place of torment that you cannot hide. You will not be able to seek shelter. But hell is a wonderful place in torment. The moment when a person dies, his soul and spirit is separated from his body. The body goes into the grave, but the soul goes to either heaven or to hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a place of either paradise or a place of torment. You know, the Bible teaches me that hell was only created for the devil and the fallen angels. Hell was not designed for mankind. God did not have in his mind to send his creation to this place called hell. It was designed for the devil and his angels. But the Bible teaches that all those who follow the devil to live like the devil will be thrown with the devil in the lake of fire. church in Matthew 25. Matthew 25 verse 41. Look what the word of the Lord reads. These are hard preachers to preach because it's so heavy. Then Jesus said, Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. The most important thing in your life is not your car. Amen. Come on, come on. The most important thing in your life is not your job. Take it it's not how much money you have in your pocket or your bank account it's about your salvation. Your salvation is the most important thing to God and to Jesus. That's a whole purpose for Jesus to die on that cross. To save sinners.
hinders from going to that place. Hebrews 9.27 says, Just as it is appointed for all to die, and after that, the certain judgment. We're all going to die one day. Will you be ready to face God? I know I am. I've been saved by the blood. But what about my sister? What about my cousin? What about my love? Will they be ready? There is life after death. Where will you be after death? Where will your loved ones be? See, the rich man did not know when he was going to die. He did not take serious his salvation. He was never taking serious his salvation. He lived in the splendor of all his riches. He lived in it. And today many Christians are living in the splendor of the riches of the world. That's right. And they do not value their salvation. And the sad part is they don't think that there is a hell. Because if every Christian believed that there was a hell, they'd be telling everyone about Jesus. The streets will be flooded with Christians wondering, hey, Jesus is the answer. Jehovah Witnesses are out there. Witnessing. You see them every Saturday. Sometimes on Sunday. You will see them. The Mormons are out there. But where are the Christians? Plain church. Not taking serious salvation. If we would die today, where would you go? If someone will come in and shoot up this place, where would we go? It happens. Churches all across America are being shot up. You know, a sign that shows a person that values his salvation. Is his heart pounding to share the gospel with others? Yes, God. We're in a war for souls. The rich man, he valued the salvation of God after his death, but it was too late. Look what the Bible says in Luke 16, going back to the story. And he said, this is the rich man talking to Abraham. He told him, I can't send Lazarus to you. And he can't come over here. And so he tells him, then I beg you, Father, that you send Lazarus to my father's house. For I have five brothers. In order that he may warn them, say warn them. So that they will not also come to this place of torment. See, all of a sudden, this rich man, he wants to be an evangelist. Now he wants to go to the streets and tell people about Jesus. Now he wants to warn his loved ones, hey, there is a place called hell. But it was too late. So he begged, send Lazarus to my father's house to warn them about this place called hell. But he said, no. But Abraham said, they have Moses. They have the prophets. Let them hear from them. But you know what the problem is? Where's the prophets at? Where, where are they at? Are they out there? We're here. We're doing our best. 
Tell people about Jesus. Abraham, let them hear from them. Some are doing it. Some are not. But then the rich man said, No, Father Abraham. But if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And look what Abraham says. But he said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded, even if someone rises from the dead. And we know someone rose from the dead. And still to this day, people are, are still not convinced. They're still not convinced of salvation. Because the devil has them blind. It's your job. It's my job to go and take out those blindfolds. This is God's love and mercy right here. In, in 2 Peter 3, 9 it says, The Lord is not slow about his promises. As some count slowness. <laughs> but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but to all come to repentance. I need to repent. You need to repent. We're, we have not been taking our salvation seriously. We're playing too much games in church. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, and I'm done with this. Paul writes these words. He says, For I delivered to you as a first importance what I also received. The most important thing you need to know is that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He died on the cross for our sins. Every sin we committed, Jesus took on the cross. Hallelujah. He nailed every sin to the cross. Through his bloodshed, we can find that cleanseness. He cleanses us, washes us, purifies us, wash away the filth. How many of us we, we, we wash our laundry? I hope everyone does, right? That laundry, the, the whole purpose of washing your clothes is to wash away all that filth. That's what the blood of Jesus does. It washes away all your sins. Makes you white as snow. So Paul says, the first thing I want to give you, the most important thing, I deliver to you is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried to kill the nature of sin in our hearts and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures so that you and I too can walk in newness of life a resurrection body you and I have a job to do, church. We have a job to do. It's to preach the gospel. To warn people about this place called hell. That if they are die without Jesus, they will go to a place called hell. And I know you feel my heart. It's not my heart that you feel. You're feeling the heart of God. Where God is looking on this earth. That's confused. That's lost. He's telling you, wake up, church. We are involved in spiritual war. The devil wants to take as many souls to hell. You, your loved ones, your mom, your dad, your sisters, your brothers, your tias, your nephew, your niece. The devil wants to take everyone he can to hell. It's our job to make take, take things serious. It's a wake-up call. This message is a wake-up call. Don't be like this rich man. He waited too late. He waited too late. And after you die, there's nothing you can do. 
So as long as you and I both have breath, as long as you and I both have a life on earth, we need to do our part and tell people about Jesus, about his salvation, how he has the power to forgive sin, to restore their lives, and mostly to save their soul from going to this place called him. Bow your heads and say this prayer.